Welcome, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, to this webinar on pile cap design. Um, we've had pile caps in the Master Series for quite a long time, but it has been very restrictive. And I'm just going to start the software, and I'm going to start the 2019 version. This is the front screen of the Master Series, our programs, any recent files, any announcements, such as there's a webinar today. Hey, that's quite interesting. Or resources where you can learn about videos of the software, manuals and tutorials. Back to programs, let's just keep this very simple, very straightforward. Traditionally the PileCamp has been a standalone program. So if I just go into Concrete and just take a brand new PileCamp, call it Tommy and create. You come across a pile cap when you say, right, I want to have a four pile pile cap and I have 450 piles, working load 900 kilonewtons per pile, total load, what's the problem? The problem is at this moment in time, the strut angle is too such. Um, you should be using strut theory rather than bending. So that gets us to the first interesting thing, design methods. Design can be beam theory or it can be strut and tie. And where applicable, um, you could use the minimum or the maximum of the two theories to allow you to um, either be on the bone, taking the minimum of the two, or the maximum of the two would be the more conservative method. Um, but we will stay with strut and tie. Now, if we were doing beams, we would even have be deep beam theory uh, using out of um, Reynolds and Steedman um, theory on deep beams. But in this case, very simple strut and tie. So, while we're here, what have we got? We've got to design the bending for the net ultimate limit state loads. That sounds more sensible. And we want to design the truss compression zone. So the compression zone up here, we take a cylinder and we check that cylinder. That's the dispersion of load rather than the strut. The strut comes up through here. Um, we take a cylinder equal to the diameter of the column or the pad. So not the pad, the column or the pile. And we check that against compression. And again, deep bean theory if we have to. So very straightforward, but where it gets interesting is not in the number of piles, whether they're end bearing or not, because obviously if they're not end bearing, we need to watch our distance between the piles, so friction piles shouldn't be closer than 3D, and there's a little check in there for that, and there's a slight modification then involved. We've got our dead, our imposed, and our company imposed, accompanying imposed. Yes, we are working to the Euro code. So Euro code 2 and the UK National Annex. And here we go. We can say what our axial loads are. Our accompanying load could be your wind if you end up with a minus 200 wind. It'll then take that off the dead or the dead and alive. Moments. Moments were introduced in the 2000 and 18, I believe. So we can introduce moments into our base. So I can say I have a 12 kilonewton moment in the x-axis uh, from dead and a 12 kilonewton from live. And what you'll now see, and we'll just reduce the depth of this in a second. We'll leave it only moments on one axis. We'll use the typical load factors and come back down here and we will reduce our depth of our pile cap down to something more sensible, 750 deep. So, what we've got here is a pile cap that works. But before we get there, what we're looking at is moving over to the other information. And the first thing is, what's our cover sides? 50 and top 50, bottom 75, the more sensible. And how much of a pile cap overhang? That pile cap overhang is the distance between here and here. And the 150 default is normally allowed 
used to allow for a cover plus a 75 tolerance in your placing of your piles. Um, and then the bar reinforcement, which we will look at again in a minute. So coming back, we will see that it's working. It's worked out from our basic loads, our applied moments and axials, and it's using these and factoring them up. The load per pile, and it's doing the surface loads, and then it's looking at the ultimate loads and giving us our design. So our service is giving us our service load because of the moment we have different loads. If I come back to the pile information and put on a 110 kilonewton, you'll now see a big variation between the left and right piles. It's uniaxial, so there's not a big hassle. Because we're dealing with um, Euro code, there is a limit in the Euro code that says that up to 35% we can use beam theory or not. So it's saying, hold on, we're at 34% and it's at 35%. So it's suggesting that we go and use the beam theory rather than the strut and tie because our angle is too shallow. We've reduced our angle down to too shallow and the minimum is 35 recommended for strut and tie. But at 34.2 we'd probably be okay at strut and tie. So the caution is there and you'll see the reinforcement for a strut and tie working out the percentage of reinforcement, the force in the member and the area required so the tension divided by the working gamma reduction on the on the stresses and it gives you two eight five four millimeters required of reinforcement and we have more than that otherwise we get a warning here if I was to come down to the main reinforcement and it's normally well it's X and Y in this case because we're looking at both axes let's look at this first for the Y axis so if I was to reduce these from 20s down to 25s, 20, 25s, and down to 16s, it's now giving us a percentage warning, but also a capacity warning at the same time. So it's checking both of those conditions. And likewise, we would do the same in the other direction. And it is actually because of the changing in covers, looking for a slightly bigger area in the other direction because of the way the moments are working uh, minor and minor major it's actually asking for a bigger force so I would probably go for 25s in both directions just to make sure that we get no mistakes so again that's again all very straightforward we've done our strut and tie we're looking at our beam plane sh shear and for two piles so we're looking at a shear either across here or across at point f two in a uh, fifth of the diam diameter in is where the shear planes are checked and we're also checking those against the enhanced shear um, zones so that's your plane shear in the other axis and then we do a punching shear punching shear at the column head so we're taking off the self weights and we're working backwards and we're seeing that we could resist 3700 and we have two three so we're okay there and then taking our perimeter 2d and from a fifth of the distance in from the piles and we then look at the reduced and we do an enhancement as well because the codes allow us to do this enhancement on the design and we get our capacity and we can see that we're at 0 0.7, 71, 72% utilization. We also, to the Euro code, check the vertical compression. And the pile definition is CCT, so compression on the pile, compression on the concrete, that's the struts and compression, the ties and tension, of course it is Tommy. And we then have an anti-check steel 
just in case we're deeper than 750. And because it's a friction pile, we're making sure that the spacing is equal to or greater than 3D. So all very straightforward. So the only thing we've introduced here so far that's complex is a slight movement of forces due to the moment I've applied. But what can be far more significant is when you're piling near to an adjacent building, you actually don't have your column concentric on your pile. So we're going to offset it, not in the y-axis, but in the x-axis. So I'm going to put it right over here. And we can see the shear perimeter is getting a wee bit annoyed because we have now got a far bigger distribution of loads, ultimate and service. And then we come down. The normal bending and shear are okay. It's the punching shear at the column head. And we can see that we're actually ending up with a variation on the capacity and we're actually out. So what can we do to improve that? A couple of things. We could maybe strengthen our bars, reduce our bar centers to 150 in both directions and that solves it. Or quite frequently it's more economical to come along and just make it 50 mil higher a deeper pad. So what we've got here is an eccentrically loaded pile cap with moment in both directions. So quite complex. Now obviously that's a four pile pile cap. We can stipulate the number of piles, so a five pile and it's just gone back to centering it and six pile and then a seven pile. So in a seven pile it's actually made things a lot worse due to the distances that we actually can get from a single pile shearing across here. So we need to be careful when we're doing these, um, how it works. So very, very flexible and powerful. But that is just the standalone. So I'm going to come out of this. <clears throat> and of course the standalone pile cap designer is available. It's the same program. You can buy it on its own if that's all you need and you don't use any of our other software. You can take the pile cap designer and pop in the loads just as I was doing it. But more significantly is if we go to a frame that we've analyzed, steel frame, concrete frame, steel concrete composite, doesn't matter, and open up this frame, we can see a nice complex frame and initially pile uh, pads everywhere as the default, just turn those off. Um, quite a lot of loading on it, 3D frame, it's all steelwork and composite, so mixture of steel and composite levels coming through. And if we then look at the gravity loading with a key, we will see that we've got line loads, patch loads, we've even got around these staircases additional loading uh, around the stairs to simulate the stairs coming down onto them. Some people actually put the stair in as a surface coming from one level to another and that's fine but I find it just as easy to put them in as a pair of line loads because normally they come in as a precast item anyway. Right so uh, that's your gravity loading as you can see six kilonewton live loads uh, on a patch five kilonewtons elsewhere uh, it's a plant rooms or something, and 0.75 somewhere, um, quite small, as an additional load. So that point at 7.5 is coming in there. And also, if we turn off the gravity and the patches, we also then have wind load applied to this. So we're looking at different wind directions and wind pressures onto this structure. And I can see for each direction, what is the wind pressure? So wind pressure giving us suction and everything on the structure and it's all pretty straightforward. So analyze the frame, static analysis, 
and I dropped out a few of the loading cases just to get my process here done a bit quicker but we are doing horizontal loads we have a few of the wind loads considered and we're going space frame so off it goes and in less than 10 seconds it's done the analysis turn off the 3d turn off the wind analysis so we can go into our design and if we're doing pad foundations we'd use the concrete beam column pad and I will come back to pads later on but I'm interested in pile caps so I have one pile in here now I just put it in as a default uh, interestingly it's working if I take this and I then copy that to this pile cap it's not working because of the push and pull of the moment, the forces I only analyzed, the wind in one direction. So obviously this is the one that um, is not beneficial. So we're looking at needing a bit more reinforcement and a bit more shear. So possibly we could think of a four pile pile cap or we could deepen it. But I'm going to play around first of all and see if I can get heavier reinforcement and it's interesting to be watched that you're reinforcing the correct direction so 32s will solve the bending problem but not the shear and on the x-axis we do need to increase the 20s to solve that um, problem but we have a little problem with about 12 percent on our shear now one of the ways to get around that is obviously to deepen the pad from 900 to a meter and that should take out 10% plus the effective lever arm so if I come here and I say it's a meter it's giving us because of the weight of the pile cap um, because the piles themselves the working loads are based on the working load of the pile cap plus everything else so it's actually gone heavier that's interesting so we can't do that uh, another little trick sometimes is to either increase the reinforcement but we're too close together and we're still out so that's not going to work so another little trick sometimes is to increase the overhang of the pad but again that's going to increase the load because that overhang increase Ignoring the load increase has just made us have a wider cross-section that won't shear. So that's another little trick sometimes to work with. In my case, I'm going to go back to the 175 and I'm probably going to go and choose a stronger pile cap. So 450 is at 900. Well, I'm going to say actually, no, we've checked them out and actually they can resist 950 or a meter. So coming back, I can now go to my dimensions where is it and increase the width there we go at 200 overhang that will work now that's those two if we come into something a bit heavier such as an internal uh, we'll see there's no pile there at the minute I want to take this copy it in here as a starter we're way out in our pile capacity so we're going to have to go from two say to three that's still not good enough to four piles so at four piles our bending is not good enough so at four piles we're looking at our reinforcement again we might get away with less no 20s so 25s in both directions so there we go is our pile cap designed so what are we designed we're looking again as I say in this case it's an axially loaded more or less there's no real change in loads there's a tiniest little four kilonewton meter moment in one direction um, our strut and tie theory our shear on our beams and then because it's a big one we're looking at the punching we're looking at the punching on the forehead we're looking at the column head and we're taking off the self weight and we're finding that we can resist that um, just in our co column head 
we also then check the reduced enhanced capacity against the punching perimeter. And again, we also check the truss compression on the pile uh, through the simple rules and, and the, any anti-crack steel for the side. So that's our pile cap done. And again, it's got slight moment, but I could offset that pile so I could say, well, actually, it is, for whatever reasons, can't go down concentric, it's eccentric, and therefore we need a wee bit more of a design. In fact, we'd probably need another pile because it's eccentric. So let's go and increase that to five piles. We're okay with the piles. We now need the shear perimeter. And let's have a quick look at our reinforcement. And we're seeing that it is a wee bit difficult. So I am going to deepen this pile cap to a meter deep. And that's just got too heavy. 950. It's on the boat. It was not my intention in this example to have piles that suddenly overload the pile caps just to the self weight of, of the pile caps. But as you can see, very, very powerful. Now, one thing that's quite interesting sometimes in design is where you're dealing with these piles that can't go right out to the column edge. If you're dealing with single piles, it's not really part of this in some respects because it's more isolated piles. And the way trick is to put a concrete ground beam in and then just put a column and support. So if I go back to my first pile cap, take this one, and I copy this over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and make a copy of it. And I'm going to apply it here. And I'm going to rotate it 390 degrees because it is sitting crossways to this in from the sides of the building. So makes no difference. Oh, there it is, rotation angle, 90 degrees. So it's sitting here and it's now working perfectly fine with this cross beam. So to get piles and pile caps onto ground beams, you really need to drop a wee tiny column. It is something that the developers are looking to allow you to put a pile. I can put a pile there because there's a column. I just couldn't put a pile there because there was no column above, so I had to put a column below just to mimic it. Um, but that's not a difficult process to get around. Um, everything is working fine, and that is all straightforward for you to see. Naturally, we can take some of the bigger load members and I'm going to again move to the next brief take this big four pile pile cap and I'm going to take a copy of it and apply it right into the center here to one of the heavily loaded ones and oh it's a different heavily loaded one but we're still overloaded with five piles per pile so we're going to need to go up to six and where everything's fine except for our shear and we just need to look at our shear perimeters because obviously we offset things and with the six pile pile caps we end up having a problem with shear because we do have this big distance that we can actually shear across and we lose our enhancement as we walk across this so in this direction it's a short distance between here and here and we get the normal enhancement to the shear close to the load or close to the support whereas here these boyos aren't and therefore you'll find I suspect in that case it is punching's a problem again it doesn't have the same enhancement and then you have the y-axis and we just need to increase our reinforcement or our depth to make that work so again, I'm using strut, and it's suggesting in this case, because I took them right down, that it's beam theory is more applicable. And even in beam theory, I will see that I'm pretty similar in my shear and pretty similar in my punching. Punching doesn't really get affected. So the two shears 
weren't a problem and the bending itself wasn't a big problem there. So I'm not going to go through and design all this, uh, that's all straightforward, but the nice thing about the program is not only does the pile cap give you the design, but the pile cap also allows you to export and schedule. So I can print a schedule of all of these to 8666 and I'm going to stay the first bar mark is 1 and I'm going to say schedule and I'm going to have a unique bar mark for each one just so that it's um, not repeating things and you can get them in, in simpler bundles and here I come with my pile caps all scheduled up accordingly. Now if we were in a 7 or a 3, I think it's a 7, yes a 7 or a 3, we would then have varying bar marks in the system. We can also take these and we can export them as a DXF export straight out into AutoCAD, into any CAD because it's a DXF file and you will see each of the pile caps then is detailed up and in our case we elected not to take top steel uh, in our design and you'll see for our six pile pile caps all the rebar detailed up for you automatically so between the schedule and this you have your full output uh, ready for you to just print off and send to the de um, contractor now one of the things was that we by default weren't putting in top steel and if I went to additional reinforcement I could say provide an upper cage so always provide a 16s at 150 upper cage and then that would sort that and make that a bit tidier on the output and safer from a design point of view or from a construction point of view so that nobody would fall in and pierce themselves on these um, sticky up bars. So that is the pile caps in essence. It didn't take long to do because it's a very quick, simple, easy program to get along with. There is that sister program that I mentioned and we said we'd look at it for doing pad foundations and if I go into my design and just into my normal concrete design where I design any pads, beams, columns and pads, I could then come along and say that I'm using C3240 concrete and well that's for, con that's for those C3240 uh, safe working pressure 200 and uh, density no cohesion no passive and no uplift allowed and I'm just going to say okay so it's actually done the ground beams first so my first little ground beam is 412s because it has no supports this one is again 412s top and bottom and whoops pick the members ah here we come where we have things that aren't supported in the right places and whatever so you can see that obviously the concrete beams is there but if i click on a foundation we will see we need three and a half meter square founds so three and a half meter square and i'm basing this on the 200 kilonewton bearing uh, safe working pressure and you'll see that we end up with a maximum stress of 206 but we have already taken an enhancement due to the soil so our basic pressure was 200 plus the depth of excavation plus the depth of the foundation gives us an enhanced safe working pressure at the base of the foundation of 223 so again it's looking after you automatically for you so quite large foundations obviously you may consider on the columns on the corners you may want smaller ones um, but that's up to you so pads are no different to the pile caps in that we can come along and we can shift them off center um, and we can move this off center so that it's coming inside and we're not having as much on the outside and that then gives us grief 
in our pressure. We're actually in uplift and we need a thicker base just to get us some stability. So in here, if I was to ask it to draw the pa the pressure, it might help, but I'm just going to work on. So putting in a, a larger base will help and we're ending up with this and we're ending up with it overturning still. So we are far too close to the edge. So now we're okay stability wise, we're just got a pressure problem of 400 kilonewtons on this close close edge um, from 400, 390 all the way down to 10. As you can see the plus and minus, the moment developed is giving us 185 so it's quite significant so you know yes we can do off -centric, eccentric pads they're not necessarily always the best and smartest things to do because of the eccentricity the wiser way of doing them is even to do a balanced beams for those as well so the pad foundations is no different to the pad cap we can also export and schedule that as well and if I then close this down and say yes and come out of this, we will see that in fact we also have a standalone version of the concrete pads. So the pads, I could get a pad foundation. And this is a pad. Yes, it is a pad. Yo ho! Lucky for me. And we've given it our column sizes and off we go and design our pads. So the pads again also has a standalone component. Not something we advertise as much as we would the pile caps, but there is a standalone version available. So that is us run through pile caps very, very quickly. And I'm going to have a quick look at any of the questions that have come up and see if I can help answer some of them. Can we design a pile cap supporting two columns? Uh, Vancho, that would be done using the finite elements. You would create a finite element surface to do that. It's, it's pretty straightforward in the FEA if I was to go into master frame and go into FEA combined base. Well, a combined base is similar to what you're after, except in this case, using the finite elements, we have um, a subgrade modulus. But in your case, you would end up instead coming in and putting nodal supports at different points. So for example, we could turn around and say we have, well, we have those horizontal supports. I'm gonna take those out and say that I have a support here, here, here here and I'm going to put them here and here so in essence what we've got is this and I'm not going to reshape the thing and then come along and better to put those in as columns but you know, um, reactions are fine and then going into the surface I would take this surface and edge supports I would take off the subgrade modulus and say it has no subgrade modulus or compression only. And when I analyze static analysis, it will then give me a similar, but different, because this is a fine element design, uh, shell elements, and it's gonna give me, for example, all my moments, that's the wooden armor, moments in a different particular directions. You can see it hogging over here and here and here and here. So we're seeing um, the forces and the moments. We're actually ignoring the around the column head itself, but putting it in plan, you would see that we have, and we've probably, yes, we've asked, asked for peak smoothing. If I turn off peak smoothing, you'll then see that we're ending up with those moments around that column head. So that's the pile head and the pile head here. Lesser stresses over here and here and virtually nothing over here because of the way the forces were all over on the left and if I come along then and say well actually I want to look at top steel you can see the design of the top steel over these and even then it's only 489 so it would work fine so you can do it um, 
using the finer elements when you have more than a single column. Loading cases, that's actually another good question. Uh, if I come back into the tutor, you will find, in fact, and it's probably a miss of me not to do it, uh, and I apologize. You'll see that by default, we are looking at loading case one and loading case seven as being the first service and first ultimate. Uh, in fact, we really want to scan to see if there's any more critical. Usually the, the Dead Plus Live Act in, is the more critical, but in this case, there was one with a bit of moment that I should have considered that would have given me a 16% overstressing. So yes, uh, there is this scan all loading cases for critical will tell us which is the most critical and we will see that we probably need it to improve our design a wee bit on these and thus the two pile may not be enough for us. Um, we'll just go for a four pile because threes are pretty but awkward to detail and fabricate and the steel fixtures don't like them. They f neither do the contractors for shuttering frequently. They'll say no just give us four and pop that in but you know obviously it depends on the cost of placing the piles etc you know it's it's all up to you as the engineer to control this so yes you can if i'm in this case you'll see again it's loading case 10 is the most critical which is dead live and wind at 1.3535 and the wind then being the 0.75 so the live is the dominant and the wind is the trailing and you should find there's also the opposite of that and there we go and it's not as critical so yes um, it doesn't design all the cases you do need to take it and because of the complexity of the structure is the software compatible standard clothes we design to BS and Eurocode so we can design to the British standard the South African and the Eurocode and for the Eurocode we can apply our own national annex or you can create your own national annex and apply that just a few values input to design that so um, those are the designs so it's certainly it's not American codes and certainly it's not feet and inches so ladies and gentlemen I'd like to thank you all for coming along if you want to try the software and don't have a copy of the master series just come along to products and in products you'll be able to find then pile caps and start your free trial or you could have just clicked on start your free trial so click on your free trial fill in some simple information and off you go within 10 15 minutes you should get a download link to download the master series and install it on your machine learning the system is also very very straightforward if you are learning the system you just have to go and I'll just walk you through this resources videos you come into our video guides and you can go to some of the basic ones or in my case I want to go and find out all about in fact we haven't done a video on pile caps before but let's take concrete for example and we can see continuous beams ground beams um, we did a wee bit of pile caps there so that was touched in there and you then can view the video so we're talking about ground beams piled slabs and pile caps so on rafts so this was a raft at that stage so we can see these videos all useful and useful to you and I'll just close that down so guys ladies gentlemen again thank you very very much for attending so thank you very very much take care and have a great day